Hello Truth Loaders, today we're going to talk about how the bare-chested, judo master, tiger pacifying, untouchable leader of Russia has amassed control of huge capital when Kremlin officials say his salary is a mere $187,000 a year. In 2007, a secret CIA report seen by the New York Times said Putin's wealth stood at $40 billion, and that figure is said to be around 60 to 70 billion today. If Putin does control 40 billion in assets, he would be the world's current richest leader, making him more affluent than the king of Thailand, who is worth $30 billion. Pocket change to Putin. If Vladimir has acquired this multi-billion pound fortune, he would have done it by controlling three of Russia's biggest energy companies. Sergat Neftigas, Gunver and Gazprom. It's claimed that he indirectly controls a 37% stake in Sergat Neftigas, an oil exploration company with annual revenue of $20 billion. Putin indirectly controls half of Gunver, a Swiss-based oil trading company that has won a series of state contracts whose takings were $80 billion last year. Then there's the 4.5% stake in Gazprom, the state's energy plant. Fiona Hill, a Russia expert formerly at the National Intelligence Council, thinks Putin's inner circle is itself behind this. And who's the president of Sergei Neftigas? Vladimir Bogdanov a confidant of Putin during the 2004 Russian presidential election, who is an oil tycoon, the third wealthiest Russian, and a member of the Kanti Mansi legislature, which produces the majority of oil in Russia, giving it great, great economic importance. Bogdanov has ties to the Kremlin running Putin's maiden election campaign in West Siberia in the year 2000. As a known supporter of the defense and nuclear industries, Putin will go to extreme lengths to protect Russia's legacy. In a 2012 newspaper article, Putin thanked Bogdanov and Sergei Neftigas personally for funding a Pacific nuclear submarine base in 2002 when the state couldn't afford to finance it. It's believed Putin has influence over Gunver, which up until recently was run by Gennady Timchenko, a close friend of the president's. On the 19th of March 2014, Timchenko was included in the United States sanctions list in the wake of the annexation of Crimea by Russia due to his close ties with the Russian president, and it's thought because of this he had to sell his entire stake in Gunver. Then, in May 2014, Putin made Timchenko the head of the Russian business China control. In that same month, Russian gas giant Gazprom, the third energy company linked to Putin, secured a long-delayed gas deal with China. Gazprom is the largest extractor of natural gas in the world and is one of the world's largest companies. Even though it's privatized, who do you think owns the majority stake? You guessed it, the Russian government. Gazprom agreed to a $400 billion deal with China to supply gas over 30 years, beginning in the year 2019. And the company currently has a monopoly over the right to export gas from Russia via the pipelines. Gazprom CEO Alexei Miller said in May that his company had no plans to give other companies access to pipelines. In 2012, Putin signed a decree prohibiting state-controlled companies from handing over information to foreign authorities without prior permission from Moscow. On top of this, he's also forced state firms to obtain his permission to any change of pricing of contracts with overseas groups. He said he did not want Russia's strategic interests compromised, and the move came after the European Commission said it wanted to investigate Gazprom for abusing its dominant position. In 2008, Putin said his finances were not worth discussing and any indication that he was rich was rubbish. He declared a small apartment and owns three cars. Sound right for one of the world's most powerful leaders? I don't think so. In 2012, Putin's tax declaration in order to run for president was $115,000. His bank balance had $179,000 and his wife Ludmilia had $261,000 in four bank accounts. Opposition politician Boris Nemstov, who was the first deputy prime minister under Putin's predecessor, Boris Yeltsin, published a report last year on the wealth of Putin's circle, describing how Putin's relatives and friends all got rich during this time. 
It also talks about his perks as head of state, including yachts and residences. However, Moscow has dismissed these claims as absurd. Putin's presidential perks include 20 palaces, 43 planes, 15 helicopters, and a fleet of yachts. Written in Russian, an entire chapter is dedicated to Putin's extensive Swiss watch collection, for which a man on his salary could not afford. Not bad for a day's work, is it? In the early days of his first term as president, Putin had promised to rid Russia of its corrupt oligarchs. As Russia provides Europe with 25% of its gas imports, is Putin single-handedly using his political power and control to fund his own empire when he steps down? When Putin's third presidential term runs out in 2018, he will be eligible for one more term in office, if he feels up to it at the age of 65. In the interim, this gives him time to use his power and call in favours for his friends and family and turn these assets into cold, hard cash. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. You can check out my video from last week on Malaysia Airlines MH370 and MH17 here. You can also subscribe to Truthloader by clicking this button. Dovi Sadanye.